Greetings from the allotment. Um, today I'm thinking about giving a little talk for um, for newbies, who are people who have not had an allotment. Um, now I wanted to get a few words in because I've got a friend who's coming up who could be on the list. She could very soon get an allotment if she still wants it, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to give her have a little conversation with her and see what. Uh, what she thinks it's all about. Anyway, so what, what I'm going to tell, what I'm going to say before she comes, keep an eye. Right. Allotments need quite a lot of work. Mine, as you've seen, if you've watched my earlier videos, is quite, uh, it's all raised beds, it's black fabric, it's fruit, it's all been designed for the least work as possible apart from the tunnels, which do take a bit of time. Having said that, I think, from my personal experience, on my, mine's 150 feet by 20 feet, my, my area, um, I think you need at least two hours a day, from March to October, November time, to keep on top of things. Um, it'll be interesting to see what she has to say about this, whether she's expecting to be able to spend that amount of time if she gets a hold of a plot. It would just be interesting on, on somebody who's not had an allotment ever before, has very little gardening experience, next to nothing, what she's expecting. She also lives, um, comes from a town area, so uh, she, she's been down a few times with mine, but she's not um, she's not seen what's involved behind the scenes, so it's going to be a bit interesting. So, what do I think you need? The chances are, if you take a new plot on, it's going to be overgrown. So you're going to need to um, flatten it all down. Now, from my perspective, I did this by strimming it all. Um, and then I started um, no, I, did, I dug it all and then I did start digging it and trying to get the weeds and things out but it, it was growing back, it was a dry summer um, so what I actually did, I had to use weed killer to kill it off initially, that was um, I guess that's about five years ago um, so anyway, from when I took the plot on to when I um, more or less had it, more or less had a hundred feet of it clear, I should say, um, took three months, and I was spending mornings and afternoons down here. Now, admittedly, I'm not strong, a strong chap or anything like that, you know. So, um, and, I, and when I took it on, I was well overweight. Um, the first six months, I had the plot. Uh, coincided when I had my dog as well, and I lost three stone in weight. It just shows you what it took off me, and I was right out of shape. I'm not, um, I'm, I'm still overweight now, um, but I'm fitter than what I was then. Um, so yeah, it, it was hard. It was very hard. Those first few months, um, I took the plot on the first of July. Was it 2011? I think. So it's four years I've had it, so um, I had actually got some plants growing at home in the polytunnel and what I what actually went into this plot then was some um, the Logan berries, what you see out now, they were put in. So the soft fruit, I put all those in, the gooseberries and that. I also had some pumpkins, I had quite a few pumpkins growing. And if I remember right, I did have some French beans what went in late, and some courgettes. That was it. That was mostly it. Um, and then I think I still had time to get some curly kale and some kohlrabi a bit later. Um, oh no, sorry, no I didn't. No I didn't. I'll tell you what did go in. I prepared my strawberry patch. I had a hundred plants in. That was it. So that was that's what I did. So it was the strawberries, the pumpkins, the soft fruit, um, some of them. And uh, th when I took on the neck, 
the other 50 foot which is when you come into my it's where the netted enclosure is and where all the raspberries and fruit trees are that took a further three months it was it was really bad um, and I took that on in the October of that year and I had it done in January I think and I had a little help as well because I was struggling um, with so much twitch and all sorts of junk in it right so if you've not had an allotment you're not used to gardening you've got to think about you're going to need the gardening tools you're going to need your spade your fork you're going to need a trowel a um, wheelbarrow a rake they're going to be your main things what you're going to need initially and then according to when you took the plot on and how it's all been whoever had it before you may well need a lawnmower and a strimmer as far as strimmers go you're going to have a choice of a, a battery operated or a petrol the petrol ones are very hard to start the two straight ones are really hard to pull so especially if you're uh, of a small physique physique um, you'd be better off getting a battery one however the batteries are likely to according to what price you you buy are only likely to last half an hour or so so you're either going to need another battery or you're going to have to pay for a more expensive one which has a uh, stronger battery but even then be prepared to needing another battery or having to take it home and charge it I have to charge mine up every day when I come up here um, it lasts for half an hour three quarters of an hour um, I've had it for over a year and it's still similar lifespan um, so yeah it, you, you've got it you're gonna have to think about costs then you've got things like canes maybe you want to have raised beds uh, things like string um, posts posts to use for your raspberries or your soft fruit maybe you need to put a wire fence around your plot keep the rabbits out it, it all comes down to budget really um, I think in my first year I spent 1500 pound maybe 2000 then obviously you're gonna have you need to think whether you need a netted enclosure for your uh, vegetables and your fruit we well, you, you will need so you, you're going to have to think about nets and that because you the uh, butterflies are going to eat your plants perhaps you need a polytunnel i think if i mean i haven't gone cheaply you, you could do with a lot out without the polytunnels and stuff you you know um, maybe you can get your gardening tools from a car boot um, you're just gonna have to find the be the cheap the best way for you maybe you're not on a budget so it doesn't matter um, but I think if I ha had to take another plot on in another situation another place I would have to budget on a thousand pound because I would need to start again and I would have the tunnel which would be 200 and then you'd have to have your tools it's always best not to buy the cheapest because they don't last long you'll be buying new ones all the time especially trowels you buy those cheap one pound ones you know I've got through loads you're far better off buying a quality one Having said that, Aldi do do some quite good ones for um, two or three pound, I think they are, and they, they are quite sturdy. Um, so yeah, lot to think about. So what we're going to do is, uh, Sharina's going to be coming up, and I'm going to film her next, and we'll add we'll add the conversation into the video at some point. 
and I'll probably have another little chat uh, about this again. Well, I'm sure I will do because I'm, I'm thinking about doing a series of uh, videos for newbies. Um, I mean, it might not happen, but uh, I'm, I'm certainly thinking about it. Okay, thanks for watching. Hello all, uh, I've got my friend Sharina here. Uh, she's very keen to learn about allotments and growing things, but um, she's a real newbie. And uh, she did have a name down for an allotment, but she's decided to um, take it off the list because the, the amount of work is actually involved and the cost in buying the equipment from a total beginner who's got nothing. So anyway, what we're doing today, Sharina's just helped me fill up all these um, four inch pots and we're going to be transplanting some tomatoes, some gardener's delight. Uh, I'm probably going to do um, just two trays and then we're going to have a look around see what else we can do. Okay, right, stick out my pocket. Yes, let the fun begin. Right, uh, it's a Okay, we'll do it there. So what we're doing here is making a hole so we can stick the tomato plant in. And sometimes we have to do a little wiggle to make it bigger. Yeah. I used to always um, sow my seeds in trays until I saw the chap at the allotment here do it this way and that's when I changed my perspective on doing things. Um, I sometimes still do the tray method but just look at those as healthy plants. What do you think Trina? They look, look brilliant don't they? You can see we've got little roots coming through at the bottom here so we know we've got some nice collection here. So what I'm going to do, a little tap. My method is to separate a few at a time. There's the plan. That's just a baby one. Drop the root in. With tomatoes, you can go up to the first leaves. So if it's a bit blanky, you can bury it, and they'll they'll root. The roots will come out of that stem. Now that's 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 a better one, isn't it? In fact, it's probably. Probably going to be too big for these pots already. Would you like to have a go? So you meant to hold them by the leaves, but I, I just do it gently. You've got to be very gentle, and then you just kind of drop it in. That's it. And that's it. Brilliant. Just get it firm. Yeah. 
you get in it? Got a bit lanky these have. to make it stand up flat a bit better. I think we've, uh, we've, we've definitely let these grow too too much. Do we bigger pots? So folks, the lesson is not to let your plants grow so much in the container. If, you, if you've not filled the container right the way up, you can often get misleaded because you think because the plant's only so big. In fact, you've left an inch, the, the top of the soil is an inch below the pot, so it's a lot more lanky than you actually think it is. So you can, to some extent, um, compensate by burying it deeper because you can go up to the first leaves. Something you've learnt, Sharina. system. stop it for this session now we're going to move on to something else uh, have a little chat off camera i hope you've enjoyed it so far and we'll catch you a bit later hello all well, back again um sharina's now left uh, we had a little chat about um, allotments and she's uh, decided it's not not the right time for her to have a plot um, there's just too much cost involved with the uh, equipment you will need, having not a single item. Um, 
and her other interests and work commitments. So anyway, while she's it, she likes to pop down and give a just help out a little and just breathe the air down here because it's she lives in the city and that and it's it's just not the same. But anyway, what we've done potted up those tomatoes. Now I've got my doubts that these are gonna be any good, these garden slide. I've just let them grow too long. I, I didn't realise it. It was just slip by. And um, what I've done is I've actually put some little um, labels to prop them up, just to, just with hoping that maybe they might uh, survive. But we'll see. So either will or they won't. It's it will be or it won't be. Um, what I've also done is I've potted up some sweet Williams. Now sweet Williams I grew, but never grown them before. I uh, really have no idea what they look like. <laughs> so, um, I'm not sure whether they're meant to be uh, all bent over or upright or what. So, anyway, for the purpose of the watering, I've, uh, I've done the same. I've put some sticks up and just uh, going to let them do the business. And Because uh, I've watered with a watering can, it's probably not a good idea. Too much water coming out flattens them. Um, I've just done a load more dahlias. I've, I've actually taken some through to the bottom tunnel and I've bought some more what need to be transplanted. And I knew I had some more and I've just spotted them under there. Uh, they need to be done as well. So I'm going to get that tray out in a minute before I forget. And they're Clannies mix. So I've got three trays left of dahlias to transplant. Um, I'm not sure how many I've got. I know I did say there's probably 500, but I think that was an overestimate. <laughs> uh, but nevertheless, um, it's going to be interesting to see. Um, I'm just looking, I've got one, two, three, four, five. I might, I might have maybe 300 days. I think that's going to be more of a realistic figure. Um, so yeah, um, so I've, been, I've had quite a busy afternoon. Um, I think it's coming to the end now. I think I've had enough. I need, I need to uh, take a break. Um, and um, we'll continue tomorrow. Um, and now we'll do... Uh, do some more of these uh, newbie videos, I think, uh, when I can think of something to uh, say. Um, if you've got any questions, then please um, put them down in the comments. Um, I'll try and answer them. I'm no expert. But, uh, I don't think any gardener is an expert, really. I think we're, everybody's always learning. There's always new ways of doing things. Uh, there's not, it's never always the black and white, you know, whether you have to do it this way, you know, it's really down to how, to what method do you find best, you know, how you, how you grow and how you pot up, it's, it's just something what will, you'll, you'll find works for you or it doesn't. I can only uh, tell you what has worked for me. Um, this with the tomatoes, I have my I have my serious doubts whether these are going to recover. I think they're just too leggy. Um, I have buried them down to the first leaves. Um, I think they really needed to go maybe in bigger pots. I think they've already outgrown these before I even put them in. Um, but we'll see. I have got um, I've got some up there, and I've got some at the back of me anyway. So. I'm not too fussed whether these are... If, the, if these don't survive, then all I do is just pull them out. I can still use the soil for something else, so... Um, there's no worries there. Just have a quick look at my lettuce. I can see that they're growing now. It won't be long before I can pick one. Okay, that's it then. Thanks for watching.